This week on Clown College. I have acid reflux so bad to where I can eat something that's like spicy or red meat or anything like that. And I will literally take two bites and throw up. Damn, wow. Man. I shouldn't be drinking this. I shouldn't be eating those wings. <laughs> Um, I would like you all to know he he requested the wing. <laughs> I oh, did yeah. request it. He did request it. <laughs> he requested the wings. I was like, I was like so. we didn't. Dom was like, "What do you want to eat?" And I was like, "I want wings." <laughs> this is the Clown College Podcast. We're just a couple of open micers trying to make our way through the scene. Where we interview comedians throughout different stages of their comedy career, no matter if they're open micers, headliners, or traveling comedians. I'm here too, Jamie 2.0. I just talk a lot more. Damn it, Brandon! Go sit in the corner. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We're back. Well, we got some swag now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, some yes, shenanigans swag. Hell yeah. You got yours over there? You got yeah, your notebook? Oh, no, let me show. oh, no, I got some swag, though. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Hell what is yeah. that? It's me. <laughs> what? It's me. Look, you don't see it? <laughs> he's saying he's swaggy, bro. That's all he's saying. I put the swag in the clown college. Oh, uh, okay. The, with the pen. You said that's you, though. The, oh, yeah. The I'm action agency, figure? Yeah. The white man? No, this is black, right? Uh, black dude. <laughs> is he black? Yeah, I changed I'm the face. Yeah, he is oh, black. Okay, okay. It's just the glare uh, makes yeah. him look white. Yeah, Legos are crazy. <laughs> I thought he was saying he had swag. That's why I laughed so hard. <laughs> no, no, I, he, I, I no thought you had today. a glass and he was like, "That's me. <laughs> I'm the swag." No, I got. It. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit!" I, well, well, you know, I got a little swag, but not. I, 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 not well, we, hey, that we see haircut. That haircut oh, that yeah. changed the man. I know. I know. Shout out Mike Sales. Shout man. out. Yeah, shout out, man. He did an amazing job. Uh, yeah, yeah. You got your little tent out. fade. You can't tell you nothing. Hell. Athena yeah. said you just been wilding. <laughs> look at that <laughs> smile, you ain't, dude. You ain't stopped looking in the yeah, mirror. Yeah, I'm a that different book. man now, man. It's like the symbiote suit from Spider Man. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it, dude. <laughs> All black, huh? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, gang, gang. Gang. <laughs> Fuck these white motherfuckers, right? Hey, before. Now, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. There we okay. go. On that note, dude, the, I was taught to, to kill it with kindness, dude. I'm going to kill you with kindness. Me and Brandon were talking, and we appreciate all that you do. For the podcast, the editing and everything. Dom does all of it. He takes a lot of time out of his life to do that for us, and we are very appreciative. So we got you a surprise, dude. We chipped in, and we got you a surprise. Shut mm-hmm. the fuck up. Here you go, man. Hell Here yeah, you go, man. dude. <laughs> Y'all shut the fuck up. Man, some dramatic Hell music. yeah, dude. <laughs> come here, baby. Dude. Hey, come here. This is like Christmas for me. We wanted Hell you... Yeah. To die faster so we can replace you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to do this all in a day? No, I'm just kidding. No, no. This is all uh, a whole, a, co- what? a carton? <laughs> no, I was going to say this is all a ploy to uh, get Dante to replace me. You yeah. sons of bitches. Oh, no. It's a coup, man. <laughs> tired of it. No, hey, thank you, guys. I was fucking tired. Oh, yeah, man. They're the Pretty longs. Safe. They didn't have the shorts. Don't worry so. about it. Just kill yourself. Long <laughs> Take a little longer to puff. <laughs> It gives you a longer break, dude. Longer oh, yeah. experience. Fuck sci-fi, man. Yeah, dude. Damn, so. <laughs> way more important. <laughs> this is, Put that this tower up and shit. <laughs> this we tower. have cards in here. And then Tower 7 back here. Oh, man, he gonna lose <laughs> Tower <this>. 7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, at Stand Up Live, me and Sci-Fi were talking, and he kept calling it Building 7, but I never <laughs> corrected him. He kept saying, it's like, and then Building 7 fell down. I'm like, what is Building like 7? That. Tower 7. What I mean, yeah, what's Tower 7? It was. It's like a building kind of adjacent to the Twin Towers uh-huh. that randomly collapsed like a few hours or within days of the Twin Towers going down. And oh. it looks like it blew up from the in- inside, like the way it fell. That's the conspiracy, at least. I really don't know that much about mm, it. I okay. just know it's like funny to say Tower 7. I heard that on an episode of Nathan for You when he does the, the <laughs> dating the dating one, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy Dating, oh, yeah, when they that. watch him. And the girl, like she was bowling, she was like, yeah, the, the towers fell, but what about Tower 7? And you could tell he's so <laughs> confused. He's like, what? You talking about the Pentagon? <laughs> Because that guy, I remember that guy hit the two the two towers and then the Pentagon. I'm, mm-hmm. And then the other one went down there. in that field, man. Who? The other one went down in a field yeah, in like yeah, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's and they wrote that uh, book about it. Yeah. They like sacrificed themselves to t- get the plane down to save other Americans. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I did mm-hmm. hear about that. But they found the black box from there, but not from the other ones. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. 
It's a 50-50 chance, dude. <laughs> oh, here we go Uh-oh. with this shit. We okay. argue about this off camera quite a bit. Jake was a little upset about it, I would say. Dude. Yeah, yeah. But he, I love how Jake came with the facts. Anything you tried to throw out there, he was like, well, actually, it's a 66% probability. <laughs> Hell yeah. Speaking of something else we were arguing about, do you guys think out there, please comment, if you were in the ocean and a barracuda was trying to kill you, one singular barracuda, could you? would it kill you? Would one barracuda kill you? Yes. Yes. Dude. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Especially if you can't swim. Well, you, yeah. You didn't have to. Well, well, you eat like you, it. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a shrimp. It'll take you. <laughs> I can't hey, swim. have you seen that one shrimp, dude, that, that punches hits, yeah. real hard? It's like the hardest, Punch, one of the hardest like, things ever, dude. Yeah. Like PSI. Yeah. Like relative and shit. It it goes so fast it boils the water around it, man. Damn. The mantis shrimp Damn. it'll fuck you up. Brandon, if we get if we get five hundred subscribers in the next three months, can we let you get punched by the mantis shrimp, dude? This is some brave wilderness shit. Yes. But, uh, oh, it's Brandon. Oh, Coyote Peterson. Yeah, yeah it's Coyote <laughs> Peterson over here. Hey, uh, 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 well, you know no, what? That's a real guy. Oh, I was <laughs> yeah, about to no, say that's, that's the guy. Dude. That's the crazy bald white dude that lets all the bugs sting him. Oh on yeah. YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one I saw that. And uh, snapper uh, turtles. Uh, the shrimp. And, oh uh, yeah, yeah. He had the hornets on that's there. Him. I think he let a little alligator bite him. He did. A fucking snapping with the bamboo sticks. It's insane, dude. I used to wrangle snap snapping turtles. Like, during the pandemic, dude, I'll send you some pictures to throw up right here, dude. I was, I was killing. What do you them. mean wrangle them? Like, just I'd find them and I just try to pick them up. Oh, you? This wasn't a job. No, this was <laughs> just my. It was. It was COVID, dude. <laughs> you can't get around people. They didn't say you can't. You know, <laughs> fuck with the wildlife. <laughs> this is America, dude. Aren't those things Hell fast? Yeah. They are. I I don't know. I I only encountered a handful, mm-hmm. but they were smaller. If they were bigger, I probably wouldn't have fucked with them. Okay, because I seen one uh, chase my stepdad. We was at Carlisle Lake, and he was he's, he was big into fishing, and uh, I just see him high kneeing, high kneeing through this shit. I'm like, what the hell? And he had the big boots Deion on because he was standing. It, he was he, he was doing that fishing where you stand in the water and you got the big boots on. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know. What, Fly fishing is that what it, I don't know what it's called. Fly. But uh, he was doing that, and I just see him. I just see him. Bucking and bucking. It's little. Mu- I mean, it wasn't little. It was a big ass turtle. It was coming. It was coming after him. I ran. <laughs> yeah, I would have ran too. Yeah, yeah. You can get his ass. Turtle, you can get fuck both that. of us. Yeah, he my real daddy. Oh, well, fuck. <laughs> you got to do the zigzag pattern. Dude. Here you go with the zigzag I'm shit. You, it, works it probably for the does alligator, work. Yeah. Alligators. Randy, you said yeah. You're yeah, gonna because fall. if you zigzag, you got to jump on top of it. <laughs> okay, see that's that's no, that's how you, you can die. hold its mouth shut. It only has bite down power. It doesn't yeah. have unhinging power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what they say, but I wouldn't know. Alligator is the least scary of all the, um, like the wildlife that likes likes to eat meat, right? I don't know, no, man. What about like no, a bird no, or something? No, hippo. Shit, I'd rather deal with a um, alligator than an eagle. Hippo. The eagle was trying to get at you. <laughs> well, yeah, hippos don't eat meat. Dude, they, hippos kill like more hippos people. Hippos are hyper. They like, kill so. people because of territory and shit, oh, but they don't uh, eat meat. Oh, they're oh, polar bears. Know. Well, and then plus. Oh, polar bears will fuck you oh, up. Oh, polar dude. bears are the worst. Yep. Yeah. Yes. I'm saying, what's which, which one would you rather take on than an alligator? Would you rather uh, take on an eagle than an alligator? I'd, rather, I, I'd probably rather take on a hawk than an alligator. I probably could, I'd probably I could get down. I don't really know the difference, uh, man, between a hawk and eagle. way bigger. Really? Yeah. Like significantly bigger? You ain't, you never seen that video of that eagle uh hemming up a deer? A whole full grown deer? Look it up. Let's see. You said what is it? Eagles eagle uh has deer or gets deer, kills deer, whatever. We should get Brandon to do that thing where he has the glove on mm, and the fucking falcon I don't know about that one. comes and lands <laughs> on him. Oh yeah, that the Yeah, hell Falconry, yeah. dude. Yeah, once we start getting this Brandon in the wall, go through, it's gonna be so fucking fun. Okay, let's see which one. <laughs> He's trying to the one where he got him all the way up. It's in happening. There. You see bro. that? Oh, look, look how shit, far that motherfucker got that bitch in the air. What the that's hell is a fucking that? Veil, man. That's a, like a video game or something. No, that's, that's from Red real. Dead Redemption. That's, that's one of the legendary animals. This is they got real. so many of them. They do not fuck around. Let's see. What where? are you talking about, dude? Eagles, how's this even? Eagles. How much does an eagle weigh? Oh shit! Look at this one. Yeah. 
What the fuck is that? That's a bald eagle. Hold on, on. that's that's not the young that's not bird. real. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not real. Yeah. What they do? Ever. Let's see. Hold on. Oh, now look, that look, look at I'm getting a dude. Hold the fuck up. Now that's real. Yeah, uh, that thing is big as fuck though. I couldn't do it. Yeah, that thing will take you down if it wants to. Hell yeah. I don't know. You might be able to fuck an eagle. Oh know. yeah. I'm looking at you it now. Punch the shit out of it. If you Dom, you're it. dying to most animals, dude. He crazy as hell. Most animals. I'm killing a bear. Poison dart ki- frog I'm, would fuck you up. Yeah, anything poisonous would fuck me up. <laughs> My reaction time ain't that quick. <laughs> but, like shit, a barracuda, dude, it's not that big, dude. It's fast, man. Give a fuck. And you just said your reaction time isn't that yeah, good. Yeah, that, that's a down. It but because- it's ha- it has to try to kill me. I'm going to get a hold of that motherfucker. I'm going to get it under the gills. <laughs> and we'll wrap it right around out of the gills. That big ass thing, dude. Nah, yeah, not, not in the world. No, I dude, mean, that's no. like a huge. I, I've never. That, well, yeah, that's, that's that's massive. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's, that's a man. Yeah. yeah, but still. No, that's not a in the big water, ass man. fish, and yeah. it his, swims hella fast. Yeah, but his mouth isn't. What, dude? That thing can definitely open, man. Yeah. Go for the neck. Yeah, but that. I, think, yeah, I don't think it's fucking. Yeah, but you sound less confident now that you're looking at it. <laughs> that was <laughs> bigger than it. I've seen, I've seen one. I did the Shark Tank uh, in Hawaii, and uh, that was the coolest thing that I've seen. Mm. They had, like, some reef sharks and one that no, like, great whites or tar- tigers. But uh, one of those things, they shine. like they, they like different colors when you're looking at it under the water. But uh, it wasn't that big for damn sure. No, but that's that a big ass. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's the is that like a record? Mm. Yeah, because that's fucking huge. It says South Carolina Public Radio, dude. <laughs> it's probably a news article. This guy probably did some <laughs> terrible shit. <laughs> See, oh, look at that. Look, get the what, one with his teeth. One? Go, go to the one oh. with his teeth. Man, you think that thing killing dude, you? It be, it, yes. Are you crazy, dude? Look at those teeth. Yeah, Man, I break them. No. That shit probably can't even. No, dog. I'm fucking that up. I don't know. Brandon, find another big one, dude. Okay, let me search up big now. So we, see some <laughs> we got big biggest ones. barracuda ever on the, on Earth in history. <laughs> barracuda biggest. Look at that, man. Yeah, his skull. Uh, hold on, let's see one that's. This. Look at that one holding the head, dude. Right here. Damn. Look man. at that shit, dude. Hell no. That's fucking you that up. That thing dumb. is big as hell. Yeah, that one's. Look big. at the mouth on that one, dude. I mean, I'm the saying. Bottom right, Brandon. Okay. Click on that. Hold on. Let me Full below disclosure. that. Below that. Full disclosure. The, I didn't know on they the right, that. On the right, Brandon. That one. That one. That one. Look at that shit, dude. Oh, hell no. That looks man. like a fucking big ass snake or something. You see that in the water? You're uh, not peeing a little bit? Oh, hell You're full yeah. of shit, man. That's like a fucking wolf or some shit in that water. <sighs> He's reconsidering <laughs> now, dude. That's scary as fuck, man. man. It's okay to say the, that. The that's mouth scary. doesn't scare me that much, it it's, will puncture you. It looks uh, like a pussy with teeth, man. Uh, let, let me get back It's scary on as fuck. It'll, t- it'll take a chunk out of you, but it's not. I don't think it's getting that deep. That's terrifying. Well, it's getting right that deep. Dude, that thing's gonna. You'll fuck live you up. if it comes and bites you one time. <sighs> but what if it, <laughs> one but time, it, but, yeah. But what if it comes back five more? Times? If this thing is like angered and trying to kill you, now I do have to see how they attack. If they if they if they swim back <laughs> and, and pull up from, some footage, yeah, let's see. Let's see. But they don't. Ooh, yeah, I looked I it up, and they said this. they're like they don't mess with humans. Like there's no. Uh, not that really, really that many attacks. See, that's that's what I'm thinking. Those things like that's what, a, right what's a barracuda you're gonna see. Uh, let's see. Some Wait, footage, dude. Though. Okay, here goes something. Here goes something. This is artless. Okay, okay, hold up. Oh, see how fast that shit is. That's a bitch one, though. Yeah, that was a bitch. That's one. the that's like the one I saw. Yeah, that let one it has go. sickle cell and Just let it go. Look how it ain't swimming as fast as y'all made it out to be. I'm fucking, oh, no, I'm got, fucking a barracuda up. I stand on it. There's no, no way. I'm beating the shit out of that barracuda. Barracuda, that that one, we gotta maybe. see a better one. That's that's not good enough. No, that's it. That, that's, that's good. That, that's good. That's oh. like, I mean, my point still stands. We'll, let's see what the people think. <sighs> yeah, let's. See. We'll see what they think. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling which way it's gonna go, man. Yeah, we have some technical. What is that? Technical. Ugh. Technological. <laughs> Don't worry, about it. I just did it too. <laughs> <laughs> if you have anybody that's technical or something, like you know how we always got in the comments, be technical about this one. Be like, yes, barracudas can kill you. Actually, there's a fifty fifty percent chance or something. You know, please. We need like a thesis. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Get get argue about that. Yeah. It's not even argue. I would like to get detailed information about why I'm wrong or I'm right. 
and why JJ's wrong about 50 fucking percent, too, because that's, <laughs> that's silly. That, you can't prove that to be incorrect, man. Hmm. We just proved, I mean, we proved it last night. We were talking about it. He thinks it's fifty. It's a fifty percent chance that you're gonna win the lottery. <laughs> Fuck you, Jay. Fifty percent chance you're gonna win the lottery, right? It's not. It's like uh, one dude, in a the billion. The only thing that's not fifty fifty chance is you mispronouncing words. That's one hundred percent. That is hey, the only exception it, to the rule. <laughs> come on, come on. Ah, Speech is. impediment crew. Speech impediment crew. <laughs> Guys are in good company. We still learn. <laughs> meant for each other. <laughs> Oh shit! So, uh, oh, what else went down this week? I mean, the only thing I can think about is the fucking crazy shit that happened at Stand Up Live. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that was, was crazy insane. As hell. Yeah. So this uh, <laughs> this guy in the crowd clearly fucked up, like drunk as shit, and he went up like it's a it's a bucket pool Stand Up Live, and uh, he got pulled like third or fourth or something really early, and he was. He was completely fucked up there. He got up and he was like, I'm fucked up. I want another shot. And then uh, he just like, I ain't got no jokes. And just sat on sat on stage for three minutes. Then got off. And then Sci-Fi got up there. He heckled Sci-Fi, but just a light heckle, you know. And it was just like, ha, 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 just talking to him a little bit. Sci-Fi, you know, he, you know he's a professional. He got it all. Then Jalen. He's on the board. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. on the board. The board. The board. He's yeah. on the board. I can't believe Kim and Jessica let him on that board, but he's on there. <laughs> but uh, so then Jalen gets up there. Shout out to Jalen. Came back. You know, yeah. did some shows Hell here. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Always good to see and Jalen. Josh, dude. Yeah, and Josh. Yeah. <laughs> cool. His brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said it with the A. Dude. Yeah, you not said it with the A. <laughs> it's not a big deal, man. John DeBomb did it. I wonder where John DeBomb is now. Uh, hopefully not here. <laughs> and then Jalen went up. He did a light heck on Jalen, too. But then when Ty got up, oh, man. Brandon, what'd he do? Man, he was going off. He just would not let Ty even talk. He get every second, say something funny. Mm -hmm. Say something funny like that. That's the and worst shit to do. Out, yeah, 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 doing that, dude. He's trying to get through it. That's when I first pulled up. I Hell walked in, yeah. and that's what was going on. He called him fat boy. Mm -hmm. Stepping on his jokes. It got worse. <laughs> Keep on talking, Brandon. He was stepping on his jokes, man. You can't do that. Yeah, that just kind of makes it impossible. It's just a dickhead right. thing to do, especially at an open mic, man. Yeah. Like, that's lame as hell. And then, That's not yeah. the environment to do that in. No, Fuck, no. He's just drunk, and he's Why making it about him, man. And he was he wasn't just drunk. I don't they should have cut him off. I mean oh, he was yeah. I think he, he had He's to be probably drunk when he got there. Well, he had to be fucked up by the time he got there. Cause he only went he went third. You know, they gotta come to get you the drinks. It's not like they're there like every second to get you whatever drinks you need. So he probably was on his first drink at Stand Up Live. So he had to be really fucked up before he got there. And then um yeah, and then he just fucking just kept on heckling uh, Ty. Ty, got, they gave him like some extra minutes, but you know Ty's jokes. He's like, I got titties, or mm -hmm. and then dude was saying it like in a in a in a mean way. He was like, he was like, he was like, you got titties, your fat ass. Uh, you ain't got no dick. And I'm like, you stepping on all of Ty's jokes. You know what I'm saying? But Ty was he was being nice. Ty was like, no, 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 yeah. don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't get him out of there. You know how Ty is. He the crowd work guru. So yeah. uh, mm -hmm. so he handled so he handled this shit, but uh, it was still fucked up because you know this is like uh, something. If you do good on this, you can get on the showcase. Yeah. So, uh, and you can get back to back. So he pretty much fucked up ties all the tie ch chances to get on there. But then this dude, what was his name? Uh, I forgot. Pull, pull, it's right up there. What does it say? Let's see, Big Daddy Short Legs. Yeah, Big, <laughs> Big Daddy Short Legs. Uh, he got up there, and that's when shit went haywire. Oh, yeah. And we don't know this guy, so I, he might be doing stand up a lot because uh, he 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 did have good stage presence. He yes, seemed he like he's yeah, been doing yeah. it for a while, but. Uh, at the, at the time, I'm like, man, what is this? This is a guy's first time, you know, just trying to do stand up, and this dude's being an asshole. And then finally, uh, Scott was like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, oh, I was in the hallway, man. and I heard it from out there, dude. He got like, down. Damn, what did he do? He was being, I mean, he was being so chaotic. He got up. Mm -hmm. He was like, yo, I ain't fucking doing this shit to me. It's Black History Month. I'm yeah. like, you just heckle four black people. Exactly. Yeah. You didn't. Well, why did you heckle the white people? Exactly. Hey, if it's Black History Month. Yeah, yeah, he didn't right. say anything when I went up. Yeah, yeah and that it was, was after quiet time. as a fucking whistle, dog whistle, bro. What the fuck? I was, I was about to say a whistle. It was kind of dog whistle. 
<laughs> dog whistle. Quiet as a mouse, I think is the saying. <laughs> you do the dog whistle, you don't hear the only dog. <laughs> Why that sound like an old fucking quote from like the 1800s? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Daniel Harden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's Where's Bryce, time. dude? Where's Bryce? <laughs> Unreal. But, fuck it. You supposed went to be the home. bodyguard of Huntsville. <laughs> After the apartment show, he was sick. He went home, dude. Mm. He was eating fucking vapes, like the Vapo Rub, but like the cough drop version. Uh huh. He's eating that and beef jerky at the same time. Oh, wow. What kind of monster? Vapes dude? and. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, dude. Man, we said that at the same time. Yeah. Ugh. Menthol meat stick. Oh, shit. <laughs> what is that? That sounded weird. Pause this. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to cut it up and put it on there afterwards. We uh, fucked that up. Yeah, we fucked that up. Huh? What's a menthol meat stick? And no, he's saying Bryce was um, uh, at the show. <laughs> he was eating a uh, what the fuck? It was cough drops and eating a meat stick. Yeah, beef jerky. Yeah. Oh no, meat stick. Oh, okay, okay, I like. A glizzy stick. Okay. A dried yeah. glizzy stick. Okay. A Jimmy Jam stick. Jimmy, yeah, a dried like, Jimmy Jam. I just meat stick and Vicks. I was like, that's a little, uh, some people. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> some people, that's different. You know what I mean. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean? No. no. You don't know what I mean? I, I thought that because some people be like, that. that's how they were back in the day. Like in 2007, they be like, probably back, <laughs> back, in, in, the, well, back in the day. What do you think 2007 was like? Uh well I was just a child I remember like what was it like Wally came out around that time who and, uh, Wally from Disney and we had oh, okay. Wally Wally okay yeah but uh Wally dude yeah but anyway back in the two thousands uh-huh. people would say stuff like like be like I'm finna get the Vix and get the meat stick and that meant go whack off with the lotion I have never. <laughs> In all of my thirty six years, who would jack anything. off with that with the vapor rub? I don't. Know. That would hurt so fucking dude, bad. I've heard crazy story. Like I remember one dude was talking about how his mom walked in. And he actually sprained his shit. He he got scared. And I was like, damn man, you fucked up. It's horrible. People get crazy, man. Uh huh. Well, you said he sprained. He what? sprained his dick. Yeah, right? like he accidentally she opened the door and he got scared. Was like oh shit, and he was like oh. Oh, you ripped it off? No, thankfully not. Thankfully not. <laughs> People are crazy, man. But hold on, v- explain <laughs> explain to me the Vix uh, thing in two thousand seven. Well, early two thousand. Okay, it, Vicks, around around. Vix because you remember Vix vapor rub. People get the to so when they get the Vix vapor rub, I'm like, that's a method for like a, a lotion, maybe. But, uh, but, <laughs> you know, but Brandon, who said this? Just kids on the block. Like, people would just say that stuff. <laughs> it's going like, some people just say that because sometimes, man. fine, you know what, fuck it, I used to say it. It might be schizophrenia. <laughs> fine, I used to, because I used to make, like, slangs and shit, so I was. So you created this, yes. like. Okay. <laughs> it was, I was trying to cover it up, but fine. It's me. It's me. All right, I'm, it's me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I did. Okay. What? Okay. <laughs> What? Fine. Dude, I'm, we were I'm like, creative... we were like kids on the block and stuff. Fine. It was me. Fine. It was. I said. I made I it said up. That. I did that stuff. So you. So I was you a weird used, kid. So in the early two thousands, you used to call jerking off, getting the vapor rub and the meat stick. Yeah. When I learned what it was, because I didn't know. Like when people would say beat your meat and stuff, I didn't know what the fuck that meant. I'd be like, so you hitting your leg? You hitting the meat? I didn't know what it meant. So I was like. Meat stick Vaseline? Hey, fuck it. That's probably something. Yeah, Vaseline. Or a VIX, whatever that is. No, there's a big difference. <laughs> but they both... Nah. <laughs> you ever you ever put VIX on anything? Yeah, yeah. So, Chef. you know, it opens up. Uh, yeah, it yeah. opens up. You don't want to put that. No. You don't want to use that. No. Yeah, you don't want to use that. No. So I've would never you say there is a came difference? came close to using it, but I'm guaranteeing <sighs> it, that it's, a, it's a sensation for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be on there. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's probably like cologne, I guess. <laughs> See, we get so close. <laughs> we get so close to common ground. It got out. Hello? Who? Hello? Hello? Hey. Yeah, I can hear it. Uh, oh, now I hear it. Yeah, that yeah, was weird. yeah, I hear it too. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on, dude? I don't and I don't think you could top it. I don't I don't know, man. <laughs> you got it. 
This is Spacey's life. You got anything else, Brandon? What else, What a, What uh, other slang was going on that you made up in else? the 2000s, man? What's a slang I would say? I used to be like, who pissed in your cocoa puffs? Who shivered yeah. your timbers? Uh, who shit in your timbers? No, I say, who shivered your timbers? Okay. And then I used to be like, oh, man, so you're going to get the old Pascuzzi or something. That was weird. I used to just say that. And that was just what the word you made mean? up. I don't know. I'd be like, so you're going to get the old Pascuzzi? I mean, just doing some people do some weird shit. But what it, why, why was this the motion? Is that because I was like, anything weird. Yeah, Any, that's what I That's, that's what, weird. Well, I mean, hey, I'm not saying that's weird. Hey, whoever likes that, do that. But uh, Brandon, yeah, don't worry about offending people. I don't, I don't <laughs> offend nobody. You, hey, you know you what? You won't offend it. anybody, Brandon. It's good. Hey. If they are, then they just want to get offended. If they're offended Brandon, by you. you have deeply offended me yeah. Fuck, by doing man, that I'm, gesture. Hey, man. <laughs> yes. You know it right on, man. Continue doing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, I thought you got offended by that. I was like, all right. I, I don't know. I don't know either, I don't Brandon. know either, man. I don't Nobody know. does. Nobody. Okay. And that's the beauty of it. Okay, yeah. so what did the Uspacuzzi, us is that it? Was, yeah, I'd be like, man, getting in that old Pascuzzi or something. I'd be like, that's some Pascuzzi. So that's like weird. Sodomy? What's sodomy, man? <laughs> what is that? What is the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, what else, what else Britt? What, yeah. what, what's we'll been new with you this week, man? Thank, uh, thank you. It you, you huh? He has experience. He just doesn't. <laughs> He's I might know what it is. You just have to remind What me. is it? What do you think it is? Sodomy? Yeah. Okay, hold on, man. My mind's leading me right now. My side. Ah, shit. Sodomy. So sodomy. break the word sodomy. down, dude. Sod. Yeah. Sadness. Something sad. No. It is sad. Well, it's sad. It's sad. Okay. Yeah, because it is. Is, a is sad it forceful? Thing. Does that mean was it forceful? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I think it's not welcome. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, uh, remorseful, something like that. I don't no. know. It's the opposite think, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Okay, I don't know. Man. It means uh. Now I know it get it means <sighs> anal anal uh. I think it's oral or anal. Is it oral or anal? I think so. Okay. I don't know. I might be wrong, but okay. I think it's either or. Okay, so you just. Uh, what? When they're getting in your ass, Brandon. Wait, so like the prosthetic <laughs> is kind of like a prosthetic exam when they be like, hold on, man, we're going the prostate thing or whatever. No. No, that's not sodomy. That's a checkup. No, I'm talking about how they do it, though. He's on the right track, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, but. But you, can't, you consent to that. Yeah. Oh. Forcefully. Brandon, okay. you have to agree for them to do the medical procedure. Yeah. Oh, then I'm not going to do that. Uh, you got to. Well, it's oh, you don't want prostate to. cancer. Oh, hell no. I don't Let them get in there and check it. You know, some people say there's no solutions, only trade-offs, you know? Would you rather get, like, a finger in your ass every, what, year, 10 years? No, it's not every, I don't think it's every year. It's like once you turn five 40, years. it's like after that, it's like a once every five years or something. Okay. I don't know. Unless you got prostate problems, you're starting to piss a lot. I can't piss. Can you clown college prostate exam yeah. vlog when you go for the first time? <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, long just the get doc- the facial angle. Oh, as long as the man. doctor's down, oh, okay. VA won't even know. <laughs> they won't even know what's the going VA on. The VA doctor will be down. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if we just slide him a hundred dollars, like well, hell yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, hell yeah. All right, we got Justin Letlow all today. One hell of the yeah, fat, one of the founding fathers. Oh gee, yeah, hell yeah. Little Founded little Epic song. Comedy. Yeah, he's yeah. I think you did. Yeah, hell yeah. Can't yeah, wait. Yeah. Can't wait to get on there. We'll see you in a minute. We got some skits. Dr. Lawrence Redwood. He's a relationship expert who studied with the likes of Jesse Lee Peterson, Kevin Samuels, Dr. Ruth, and he's renowned in the fields of life, love, and the pursuit of sexual happiness. That's Dr. Lawrence Redwood. And that's what the goddamn W. Hello and welcome back to Love Advice with Dr. Lawrence Redwood. I'm Dr. Lawrence Redwood, and that's with a goddamn W. All right, we got a couple of more questions from the internet here today, and we're going to try to uh, help out these people, huh? If we can call them that. Okay, please hit me with the first question. Killmugger is autistic 69 asks, how to take foreplay to the next level? 
You want to take foreplay to the next level, I'll tell you what to do and I'll tell you what to do right now. The second she gives you some kind of eye at all, you see any kind of dilation in her pupils, her feet point your way, you take both fingers, you put them right in her fucking mouth, okay? How about that? Not like this. You don't hate women. You take two fingers, you put them right in her fucking mouth. And then what, you work the top. You work the top. The top and the outside. Because you care. Because you're an American. That's what you do, all right? And then slap it a little bit. Slap it a little bit, all right? Rub on the outside, like this. Yes. No. Yes. No. Do you understand? It's not complicated. I say the mouth. You know what I mean. Okay? You know what I mean. I'm to spoon feed you everything. Idiots. Thank you. Next question. That's Dr. Lawrence Redwood. And that's what the goddamn W. Murdered my ex-17 asks, what to do on a first date? There's only two things you need to remember on a first date. One, dress nice, obviously, you fucking idiot. And two, have a fucking plan. And you want to dress nice because it's not just any other day. It's, that's, and that's the message you want to put out there. You know, that you're fucking an adult and you own uh, good shoes and shit that you can go out in. You know, that you're not some kind of freaking inbred living in the mountains somewhere chasing goats and fucking sheep. All right? That you got your shit together. So dress nice, show that you're fucking capable of that in the first fucking place, and have a plan. They don't want, they don't want you, they hate when you show them, like, what are we doing? They don't fucking know, they don't fucking know anything! Uh, idiot? They never do, they don't want to have to think about it, dude. They're outsourcing their night to you, you gotta have a plan. Show them that you're capable of thought. Isn't that strange that they might not want to fuck you if you're not capable of thought? Just do that. Have a plan. Are you dressed nice? I said this before. I'll say it again. God damn it. With a goddamn W. Dress fucking nice. That's Dr. Lawrence Redwood. And that's what the goddamn W. Mary Magdalene was a whore 59 asked, what's a good reason to break up with someone? Well, Mary, first of all, was very open about her past. Uh, and... Uh, well, it depends there, uh, Mary Mags. I mean, what does she do? There are different degrees to these things, right? I mean, like, let's say she slept with your dad. There's a big difference between that and let's say switching to natural deodorant. For example, sleeping with your dad. I understand. I'm going to let you go. He's a hot commodity. It makes sense. But there's no excuse for switching to natural deodorant. It's absurd. You smell like Bigfoot, you skunk ape. What are you doing? You want to be like the French? Why? They're disgusting. But the reasons in which why you break, which you would break up with someone, they vary. All right. Let's say that the young lady you say that you've impregnated her and that she's undergone an ancient druidic ritual to abort the fetus using pity willow tea, and that she buried it under a willow tree by the river. These are things that happen. They happen to everyday Americans like you and me, mostly me, that happen. Do you understand? These are things that are beyond us. We cannot control our destiny, only how we face it. When your fetus is buried by a river, supposedly an obvious lie. On the solstice of all days. How'd she get the timing right? Thank you. That's Dr. Lawrence Redwood. And that's what the goddamn W. This week's featured comedian. Part of this I'm going to explain, and then I'm going to leave the room, and then Jason's going to explain the other part. So what's going to happen here is, at any point during the scene that I'm going to do for you guys, if I do something I'm not supposed to do, he gets to hit me with this pool noodle. Not here. Not here. <laughs> Anywhere else is fun. Anywhere else. Give it a, give it a whack. Give it away. Give it away. Yes, ma'am. How long does it last? It lasts, uh, it lasts as long as you need it, uh, It would probably be overnight.
And so the part of this day is that we try to guess like, what it was that I invented. What was it that I invented? A volcano creator. A volcano yeah. creator. All right, all right. I'm going to try to guess the thing that I couldn't do. Was it like touch myself in any kind of way? <laughs> Give me a hand. Hands. Put your hands down. Put your hands right at your sides. Oh my god. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Hell yeah. yeah. Dude, I swear to you, the colorway on this pin, like this dark green, this white, I used to have a pair of Nike shoes like this when I was a kid. Which kind were they? I don't remember, mm. but I liked them so much that I slept with them on the first night that I got them. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that's what it's like to be poor, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to steal these shoes from me. These are my you shoes. value things. I'll keep his shoes on. No, but we have a very special guest on Ooh, today. Who we got, man? We got quite literally the OG mm. of Huntsville oh, Comedy. Boy. Some would describe him as terrific. Huh? <laughs> Some may say he's incredible. Is there another word? Oh, Me, personally, hmm? I would say he's pretty epic, dude. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We got Justin Ledlow, the founder oh, of Epic yeah. Comedy. Hey. I got the round of applause and everything. Hell oh, yeah. Beautiful. Hell yeah. 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 Thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you guys having me. It's Hell awesome. yeah. Cool. Just, I got uh, I, I to keep up tradition. I got a gift. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. I got a gift. It's nothing really special. It's kind of stupid, and it's it's something That's that you guys love. can uh, yeah. you can enjoy. This is oh, well, Dom uh, can't use it. Five, <laughs> five thousand laugh out loud jokes and one liners. Hell um, yeah! This dude. is kinda this sick. <laughs> warning contains offensive jokes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, um, the, that's the only one I want. Hell yeah. So and and it really is. It's just like complete one liners. So, uh, what's the difference between <laughs> wow? What's the difference between two dicks and a joke? You can't take a joke. <laughs> That's good. That is. I invented gloves. Okay, I'm lying, but I did have a hand in it. <laughs> My wife's a magician. She can turn anything into an argument. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, boy. Hell so, yeah, uh, dude. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah thank you. Dude. We're going to read one of these out of air. Out of, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're going to read one of these every episode. Looks like I, I just got a new hour of material. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Thanks a lot, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, dude. Hell yeah! We're we're so happy to have you here. Appreciate like you. like JJ said, one of the founders of um, Huntsville Comedy. He was here before they had the mics when they had the grind to get it, and uh, you started off Epic Comedy yeah. Hour. Yeah, it was um, it was definitely a different time. So I um, I don't know. I it was probably like twenty two thousand ten maybe. Where I was, I was thinking like I'd like to go out and kind of start doing stand up. Like it seems like this is something like fun that I would really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And I was watching like a lot of Comedy Central at the time, and just you know, kind of watching people's specials and stuff like that. And I, I remember like I had dinner with some friends one night, and I was showing them. Um, I think Daniel Tosh. Ah, that's my boy. Uh, I love Tosh. People, people clown on him, but Tosh is a good dude. I just um, said he's in my top five last night when we were talking about yeah, comedian. Yeah, I mean, I can see it. I, I, love, see it I sure. love Daniel. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's definitely a good writer. He's a good performer. And he's also like, I kind of identify with him a little bit because he's he's kind of a private person. Mm -hmm. so Very I, private. Like, I, I, I do kind of put up a wall between like what I do comedically and then like the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, not as much as he does, but he's got kids and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but I was watching him. Um, Dimitri Martin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a graphic designer by trade, and Dimitri does all this art stuff. So, a lot of that stuff I like really like kind of resonated with me. And I remember I was I was having dinner with some friends one night, and I was we were talking about some of this stuff, and I was showing them some clips, and I was like, "Do you guys think I could do this? Like, do you think I could like maybe try this at some point?" And they were like, "Yeah, yeah, you've always been funny, so like try it out." Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> At that time, I was just like, well, okay, I can try this. I can write some stuff, one-liners, and some of them not as good as that as, <laughs> as Grant Tucker's uh, 5,000 laugh-out-loud jokes and one-liners. Um, but I remember thinking, like, I want to try to go do this somewhere. And I'd heard that the Flying Monkey, which is now the studio theater, which is where we you know, have Epic and everything, Okay, okay. they used to have a thing on, I think, the first Friday of every month called Monkey Speak. And it was an open mic for um, uh, like poetry and spoken word and like book readings and stuff like that. <clears throat> so I I thought, I'm going to go up there and do jokes. I'm going I'm I'm to blow these poets away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shock the system here. 
So I remember I, I wrote like a couple things and I, I printed out a 11 by 17 sign that said comedian, but I spelled it comedy a N <laughs> and I put the Microsoft word red, red squiggly line underneath it. And I had it and at this time I was working at like a print shop. So I had it laminated and I put like some kind of tie thing around it and I wore it around my neck. And at that open mic, you literally just went up like whenever you wanted. Like if somebody came off, you just go up. Uh-huh. No one hosted it or oh, anything like that. Like you just wild. straight Fucking up, you just west. went. I mean, it, like somebody would come out and, and say like, they kind of facilitated it as like, we're going to have, you know, poetry readings and blah, blah, blah and all that stuff. And then they would sit down and then it was like, literally there would be times when somebody would go on stage and then they'd come off. And we all just sit there yeah. and wait. And then somebody would be brave enough to go. <laughs> That's crazy. That so is crazy. It's, it was definitely a, a weird vibe. But I went up there and I was just like, hey, I know you guys don't get a lot of comics, a lot of comedy up here. Not that you're not funny, but <laughs> uh, I'd like to do some jokes if you don't mind. And they let me. And I did probably five minutes of like just weird. I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't even remember any of the jokes I told. And I got some laughs. And I was right, like, you okay, got some laughs. I was going to ask cool. you. Like, this is like this is this is something I could see doing. And then I went back the next month, did it again. Not a single laugh. <laughs> it was like a totally different vibe. Um, you know, some of the same people were there, but I guess the material just didn't resonate. And then, kind of got associated with some other people. Um, and then they kind of wanted to start doing some things. And then there was a. Uh, this is, this is part of the story I did not tell on my WLRH interview that I'll tell you guys here. Uh, there was an atheist convention here at one point, which is something that a lot of people think like, oh, why the fuck is that happening in Huntsville, Alabama? Uh-huh. Um, but I, I am an atheist and, and had been kind of really involved in like a group here that was into that kind of thing for a while. And this was probably late 2010, I think, maybe early 2011. I can't really remember. Um, but they had this convention here and a guy named Paul Provenza was like one of the speakers and he's a mm-hmm. comedian. Paul Provenza is a comedian that's, he's worked in LA for a long time. He used to be on a TV show in the early nineties. Um, he had a show on Showtime called the green room with, with Paul Provenza. And that one, he would basically like sit backstage with comics and like just shoot the shit about stuff. And it was just this like round table kind of discussion. It was like mm-hmm. a podcast, but it was live. Like there was an audience. And okay. Stuff. Okay. So that was on Showtime for like, yeah. So that's Paul right there. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Oh, he's, he was always, Oh, this is uh that, what would you say the show was called? The green, green room. room. Green room. Okay. Paul yeah. Cause it was kind of like what's Colin Quinn's. Uh, right, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, way less confrontational. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Way less confrontational. <laughs> um so Paul was the uh he was the one of the speakers and was going to do some comedy there and everything. And I knew that he was going to be there and I was like I, I want to go meet this guy cuz he's like the only comedian that I like know that's going to be in this vicinity mm-hmm. <laughs> for the next however long that I might have a chance to talk to. So I go to the to the convention that weekend and I I go up to him and I'm like, hey man, I'm trying to do comedy here in Huntsville. We don't have a club. We don't have an open mic. We don't have anything. Um, you know, do you got any advice? And, he, and at first he was just kind of like, well, you know, just keep going up, keep trying, you know, keep keep doing whatever you know you think you can do to to kind of make it happen. And then we all kind of ha- hung out a little bit more uh, throughout the evening. And then when the first night of the convention was over, uh, a bunch of us, myself and Tom Hand, another local mm-hmm. comic, he's also a, a a big time non-believer. Um, <laughs> we all went back to Paul's hotel room. He like let us come back and like just hang out with him. Mm-hmm. So we're all sitting back there hanging out, smoking, you know, just shooting the shit and everything. And I go into the bathroom at one point and, and he knows that I went in there and he comes and he knocks on the door and he goes, Hey, do you want to do five minutes in front of me tomorrow? And I like in the middle of peeing, like almost piss all over the toilet seat because <laughs> I'm just like, what are you asking me? So, I come out and like he's like just kind of standing there drinking and I went, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, just do five minutes in front of me tomorrow. It's no big deal. Like we're all here with a bunch of people we know and like, and you'll be fine. I was like, okay. So I went home and like just notes, do this one, do this joke. This will be funny. Mm-hmm. Atheist crowd, religious joke, blah, blah, blah. I like, got all this stuff together. Didn't sleep for, for shit. Come in the next day. Um, we're in like one of the wings at like a hotel kind of thing. So you've got this big conference room and there's probably 400 people in there. Damn. And I go up and, and do like five minutes of the corniest fucking material you've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of it was religious based because 
I was like, well, we're at a atheist convention. Yeah, like, I might as well. Talk, I might as well talk about yeah. this. So I leaned into that pretty heavily, and I used to be fairly religious, and I had kind of a falling out with a church that I used to go to, and had a lot of stupid stories based off of that. Like a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that got said to me when I quit church was really dumb. Like there was this one kid that he messaged me on Facebook after I quit church, and he said, "If you don't believe in God anymore." There's karma for you. <laughs> and I was like, motherfucker, these are two different religions you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like, where are you? <laughs> so I told that one as a joke. And then there was another one about, you know, obviously like when you're in church and you're being told not to, you know, have sex before marriage, mm-hmm. what's the thing you're going to do? You're going to fuck around before marriage. Oh. So I kind of touched on some of that material and stuff like that. And I got, I got pretty decent laughs. I think if I had told anything else, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, but that audience was was definitely that's into, what they're there for. Yeah, that's what they wanted to yeah. hear that kind of that kind of thing. And then Paul went up and he did his thing and all that. So then later that night, we're all having dinner and I'm hanging out with him and some other and Tom was there and some other people and he asked me, he was like, How long have you been doing this? And I said, Man, like six months. Like and I wouldn't even really call it doing this. Like mm-hmm. I've been going to like a poetry open mic <laughs> trying wild. to just get stage time. And he was like, well, I'm going to tell you now, if you really want this to happen, you're just going to have to make it happen. Like, if you, if you want to do this, you got to stick with it and just make it happen. And I remember, like, you know, we hung out the rest of the night and everything, and then, you know, convention was over, and Tom and I, we, you know, we talked about it a little bit more, and then some of the other people who kind of ran in that same circle, they wanted to do it. We started going to music open mics and just going up on stage when the musician would take a break and just say like, hey, can we get like 20 minutes for us to just fill the gap with some jokes and stuff? And there was a, there was a, yeah, there was a local musician that was super kind to us and she let us go up and I cannot remember her name. Um, She let us go up several times and it was awful. It was the worst experience of my life. (laughs) Uh, Going up at a music open mic to tell jokes to a crowd who does not want to fucking hear it was rough. Like we had, we got heckled. We got people telling us that we weren't funny telling us to stop. And none of us listened. Like Mm -hmm. we just kept, we just kept going with it. So a bunch of us decided like, okay, well we want to do this. Like we want to put on like an actual show. We feel like some of us have like learned enough about ourselves and our material that we want to actually go do something. So January of 2011, I sent the flying monkey an email and was like, could we do a show here? A booked stand up show featuring a bunch of local acts. Well, they're a bunch of hippies up there (laughs) or or at this time they were. So they didn't, they didn't respond to me until June. I didn't get an email back until fucking five months later. Mm. And they said, we've got July 15th open. Do you want that date? And I said, yeah, great, cool. We work out, you know, it's going to be like a 50, 50 door split, basically all this stuff is like, cool. We'll, put it on Facebook. We'll promote it. I did all the graphics for it and everything. Uh, we go and we have that first Epic and 258 people show up. And I was like, like just couldn't believe what was happening. Um, mediocre show (laughs) wasn't great. It was a bunch of, you know, new comics who didn't really know what the hell they were Mm -hmm. doing. Um, we get done and I go and I get in my car and Tom was outside in the park. Tom was on the show as well. Uh, sitting in the parking lot, Tom sees me get in my car and he comes over to me and he's like, I don't know about you, but I feel like we just started something like that's going to become something really, really good. Mm. And I was like, I agree. I definitely agree. So that was pretty much like how things got started. Yep. And now it's the longest running comedy show in Northern Alabama. Yeah. Probably in all that. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve yeah, years later. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This July will be the 13 year anniversary. Congratulations. Wow, we crazy. all thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We thank know you, we, we've heard Scott talk about it. There was no comedy scene here, and you guys yeah. paved the way for us to yeah, be I mean, here. Scott had Scott had tried to do like a little bit before um, with mixed results, and then you know I I, I used to work at a company where uh, Scott's brother was kind of my he wasn't my boss necessarily, but kind of. Um, and so that's how I met Scott was through the job that I used to have. Mm-hmm. And he, um, we just, when I had started Epic, I printed like posters at my job and Eric Scott's brother, he knew like what I was doing and what I was trying to get started and everything. And he told me like, Hey, my brother's tried to do stand up before and all that. So Scott swung by one time and, uh, we just started talking about it. And this was like after the first Epic 
And I was like, do you want to get on the second show? Because they had, <laughs> based off of the success of the first show, mm-hmm. they immediately booked us for August. <laughs> they were yeah, like, you just yeah. brought 200 something people here. So we're going to have you now. And I was like, it took you six months to give me an email and a date the first time, but now <laughs> you're going to do it immediately. Um, so they, um, they got us in for that August. And then that's when I got in touch with Scott and was like, you know, if you want to jump on this next one. And then of course, you know, from there he's been on and involved ever since. So, and then in, you know, um, 2012, June of 2012, um, I took a job in Atlanta and moved over there and I basically gave hosting and producing responsibilities over to uh, Scott, Tim Kelly, and another guy at the time named Jason Steinhauser. And Steinhauser doesn't really do comedy anymore. Okay. Um, but the three of those guys pretty much ran the ran it from there. I would come over every now and then and just kind of pop in. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still handled like all the social media and all the posters and stuff like that. But I was living in Atlanta, and, it, and you know I couldn't I couldn't be here like every month to be a part of it. But uh, and then in 2017, I did the I hosted the First night of the six-year anniversary, I was on a lot of the second night uh, when we had Late Late Breakfast on, and then I called it quits because I was like, at that time, I was like, I was getting very, very involved in the job that I had, and I just couldn't really, I couldn't focus on it enough to really make a good uh, effort with it, Mm -hmm. so I just, I kind of hung it up, and then um, unfortunately, this time last year, my mother passed away. Sorry about that. Um, That's all right. Um, <clears throat> so that's what kind of brought me back here. So I moved back here in August and, um, you know, once me and my wife got settled in, I was like, all right, I'm getting back involved. Started coming out to open mics and got in touch with Scott and was like, let me, let me get my, my foot back in the door and help out with this thing. So, oh, hell yeah. So Since here you've we are. Back those graphics. I love, uh, so you run the, uh, Hunts, what's, what do you run? Uh, so I'm the, I'm the admin, one of the admins of the Huntsville comedy page. Uh huh. Um, I've kind of taken over like all graphics duties for that. So like the graphics you see with the spaceman, I drew the spaceman thing back in 2014. Um, that and like all the graphics you see about the open mics, some of the posters, not all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I did, I did the one for fusion. Um, and then all the Epic posters and graphics and stuff since October, I've taken all that stuff back over too. Yeah. Yeah, we appreciate having you back, man. You've yeah, been killing yeah, it with all that. Oh yeah. And then, uh, where, when did when did the improv come in? So I would say if I had started doing stand up in early 2010, I I think I want to I, I think I started doing improv about six months after I started doing stand up okay. because Jason Steinhauser uh, was also doing stand up. And but he was going up to Nashville all the time. He never tried to do anything here. He was in com- uh, I almost called him Comic Science Face to Face Improv, which is now Comic Science Improv. So Face to Face was started by a man named Gene Banks, who used to live here and, and did. Uh, he's kind of responsible for the early improv scene. Uh, a guy who changed my life. Um, I found out about improv basically through Jason, and then uh, reached out to Gene and said I wanted to try it. And Gene is a, he is a mentor. Like he is very much a type of guy that says, I want to mold you into something Mm -hmm. instead of just like, I'm very thankful for a lot of opportunities, but it's one thing to tell somebody, Hey, come here and do this stuff. It's another thing for somebody to say, let me guide you along the way Mm -hmm. as we do these things together. And Gene was very much one of those people. So I, I had talked to him about wanting to do improv and he basically said, Let's go have a drink. I'm going to talk to you and get to know you. I'll give you a little spiel about what this is about. So we did that. We went, we had like, we had drinks at a bar or something one time. And he kind of told me about like what face to face is and all that stuff. And, uh, I was really interested. I was like, I'm, I'm super into this. So he invited me out to, um, excuse me. Well, indigestion there. <laughs> we got some Bud Light Platinum. <laughs> they oh, get boy. to you, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I have terrible acid reflux. So that's part of it. Oh, yeah. um, I should, but I'm glad we had wings because, you know, that's... <laughs> Hell yeah. That's... Uh, buffalo that's gonna, wings really help. That's going to help, you know. <laughs> the guy who throws up if he eats a steak is in there chowing down on wings. I've had the past, like, four anniversary dinners with my wife ruined because I'm like, I'm going to get a steak. And then my wife's like, you know what happened last time you got a steak? <laughs> you really throw up? Oh, for sure. Really? Like, what? immediately. Damn, man. Oh, I'm surprised I didn't throw up tonight. Dang. I have acid reflux so bad to where I can eat something that's, like spicy or red meat or anything like that and i will literally take two bites and throw up 
Damn, wow. Man. I shouldn't be drinking this. I shouldn't be eating those wings. <laughs> Uh, I would like you all to know he he requested the wings. <laughs> I did oh, request. Yeah. It. He did request. <laughs> he the requested. Wings. The I was like, I was like we didn't. Dom was like, what do you want to eat? And I was like, I want wings. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just give me what I want. Because my wife is my wife can't eat meat. Um, oh, okay. So I eat a lot of the stuff that she eats, mm-hmm. which is like quinoa and shit <laughs> so every now if i get an opportunity to have something that's not i'm like give me the spiciest shit you have <laughs> um so yeah but no um gene and i we went we went and had had dinner and uh, had, had some drinks and everything and then he invited me to come to like the uh, a practice that that face-to-face used to have mm-hmm. and they practiced like every week and he said come to a couple practices watch what we do pick up on some things and then we'll go from there so i came in watched like two or three practices and then he told me like on the fourth one like all right tonight i want you to be involved Mm -hmm. come in with us do warm-ups do some games kind of figure out like what we're doing so i started doing that did that for probably two months and then gene came and said you're progressing i like what i see now you're going to be in shows and he basically like laid it out like here's what i want you to do here's what i want to see you accomplish Mm -hmm. and once you start doing that then you can start being in shows and it's one of the things that I feel like uh, has really, when I say he changed my life, he really did because he brought in for one thing, improv period. But he was, like I said, he was a mentor. He was, he was the type of guy that basically said, I got a vision for what I want you to do and Mm -hmm. what I want to accomplish with face to face. Here's how I want you to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And he did that with newcomers that came after me as well. Uh, I saw him do it with people who, who, you know, came into the troop afterwards. Um, it's always good to have those people around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. no it's one thing. I mean, stand up's hard to do it with because obviously everybody's different and everybody's act is going to be different. Mm-hmm. But improv is such a team thing that you got to be on on the same page about what you're doing. Um, so we did a show. We did a weekly show at the old Sam and Greg's location, not the one that it's at now. I don't know if y'all even remember. I don't even know what Sam and Greg's is. Sam pizza and Greg's thing. is a pizza and ice cream place downtown on the square. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do. The, like they have the crunchy crust pizza. I, get, I haven't been since oh. I moved back. Yeah, so I don't I know. know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah that's really good. Well. Brandon knows. Yeah. Ice cream good, too. <laughs> he knows that pizza. Lactose intolerant, but I don't care. He, did he My, say hey. lactose intolerant? Lactose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost positive he said oh, lactose boy. intolerant. Man, we got speech impediments, man. Yeah, yeah. Don't be trying to put me in a... You were with him earlier. That was Snake. No, Snake. Just play. Just play. We. I like I like how Brandon's like, I'm lactose intolerant, but I had it anyways. And I'm like, man, I got acid reflux. I'm just yeah. wings. Like, we don't make good decisions. Yeah, we, uh, we get up in front of people behavior. and try to tell Before jokes. Like, of course we don't. <laughs> um, so we used to do a weekly show there. Uh, and then we did. We used to do a monthly show at another theater that used to exist here that's no longer around. Um, and those were, they're family friendly, which is, you know, some people like, some people don't like. I didn't have a problem with it. Um, but those were like the funnest shows I've ever done. Improv changed my life in the sense of it helped me learn how to be on stage. It helped me learn how to think in the moment. You know, the core principle behind improv is yes. And Mm -hmm. yes. And meaning if you are in a scene with somebody and they present some kind of information, you don't deny it. You just go with it and move on Mm -hmm. and, and it helps drive the scene. So if somebody comes in and they says, they say like, you know, hey Peter, how's it going? You don't go. My name's not Peter. Yeah, like you don't do that. Like okay, you say, okay. you say your name is Peter, and you go along with it. Mm-hmm. Even if you had a different idea about who you were as that character, as soon as you get named Peter, you're fucking Peter, man. Like from now on, that's who you are. And I've seen, I've seen improv like go sideways because people don't yes and like they don't take what they're supposed to learn and go with it. Is that the equivalent of a bomb? When uh, it goes like whenever they start to argue within this up. Not, I wouldn't say so because improv can always be saved if there's, and just like stand up too, but there's, I think everybody kind of goes into improv knowing like, what do you want? We just made this shit up on the spot. Mm -hmm. Like if it, if it doesn't go that well, I've seen scenes go absolutely terrible. And as soon as they're over the audience claps, because at least they're like, we know you just made that up on the spot. So you got that going for you. Um, so, you know, there, there's definitely some like traps you can fall into with doing improv that don't help that being probably the main one is just not accepting like what's being established in the scene and then kind of ruining it um but that that just doing improv i, I think that was probably one of the biggest things that kind of helped me because it helped me with, with my stand-up too mm-hmm. because i was able to go up and tell a joke 
in the moment, think of a tag, incorporate it real quick, act on whatever an audience reaction was, and then, you know, move on. Um, and then just the, the looseness of just being on stage. Um, sometimes the physicality too. Um, I like to occasionally be a little bit more physical on stage. Yeah. And I start think, noticing that. <laughs> I think, uh, no mic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite things to do is, is go off mic. I'll be honest. I stole that from Todd glass. Oh, Todd, <laughs> Todd, glass, Todd, yeah. Todd glass would frequently go off mic and I cracked me up every time. And I was like, I'm going to start doing that. Um, so that part of, of improv just like really informed just, um, my stand up. But then improv just in general, just as like a concept in life, mm -hmm. just I feel like it made me more social. It made me more comfortable with like just go out and meet people and, and regular just, conversation and just go. Yeah. yeah, just go with it. So it kind of helped me a lot there, too. Not that I was like ever not that way, but I also like in high school and then a little bit after high school, I was super shy. Like when I when people I went to high school with found out that I did that I do stand up and I uh -huh. do improv. They're shocked. They're just like, you? <laughs> like, you do this? I'm like, yeah, yeah. My God, I do this. So, but, uh, but no, man, it's not My friends one of the did that, things. but for a different reason because I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> you have two brain cells to go out there and put things together. We never knew, Dom. Those special ed classes did you well. <laughs> but you, you, uh, you teach an improv class? Tell us what no. you got. No, what, what's the uh, show? So the show that I've got going on that was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago but mm -hmm. got canceled because of the ice uh, is called Player You, and that's uh, that's now going to be March fifteenth. Oh. Um, so that is a show that I've I've kind of had in mind for a while. I love short form improv, which is games, you know, whose lines anyway type mm -hmm. stuff. A lot of like super hardcore improvisers love long form improv, which is just you know just doing scenes and you know basing them off of trying to connect a story and all that stuff. I like long form; I don't got a problem with it or anything. But to me, short form is audiences love it. They mm -hmm. identify with it more, mainly because of whose line is it anyway. Everybody's seen whose line, and they're yep, a little bit more familiar it. with it because of that. Um, but I love the games that include audience interaction. Mm -hmm. Those are just, they've always been my favorite. So I talked to a few of my improv friends in Atlanta, and I said, give me, give me a list of games that involve pure audience participation, whether they're in their seat or they're on stage or whatever it might be. I put together a list of, I don't know, probably 15 games or so that involve the audience in some kind of way, and that's all the show is. Mm -hmm. It's just games that have to, either we bring somebody on stage or we go out there to them uh, just because I just like that that interaction. Yeah. I think that it's I think it's fun. I think the audience loves it. One of the games that we do that I learned, uh, there's a game that, that, that we call Actor's Nightmare where basically like one person's on stage and another person has a script. And the person that's doing the, that's reading from the script, they can only read the stuff from the script. The other person has to adapt their lines based off of whatever's being said off of that script. Well, in Atlanta, we do it with somebody's text messages. We find a random audience member oh. and, we, and we get their phone from them and we pull up a conversa a text conversation uh. and that person has to read from the text and said, and I've seen audiences lose their shit over this. Like, There'll be somebody in the audience that has to that you know volunteers their phone or mm -hmm. something, and you you have to kind of trick them. You have to tell them like, like you you get their phone when it's in your hand, you ask them like to pull up text and everything, and then you just walk away with it, and then you just go up on stage and you say, all right, I'm going to be reading from your text messages, <laughs> and That's then they wild. they immediately start like, oh my god, <laughs> and you'll see you'll Should've see bricked, somebody. Dude. Oh yeah. yeah, don't go in the group. Gym. You'll <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The one that's labeled Daddy XXX, please don't <laughs> click on that one. Um, you'll see like friends of their friends and stuff like sitting in the audience. Like you mention somebody's name or you hit on something that only they know about, mm -hmm. they'll lose their shit. Damn. And it's it's so much fun because there's such a personal connection to you know they're seeing that shit play out live on stage. Yeah. There's another game we do where we basically bring somebody up and we find out like. If they're single, you know, if they what they like in a person, what they don't like, mm -hmm. what they're looking for in a partner, and all this other stuff, and we basically play speed date with them. So we set up a table with a bell, and then all the improvisers have to come up one by one and try to woo this person. Well, you hit on like a lot of personal things with them, yeah. And then if they don't like them, they just hit the bell, and you got you got to rotate into the next person, and it gets wild, man. Oh, and I know uh, audience 
they love to be included mm -hmm. in everything. And you're pitching this, like people are going to love to come oh, see yeah. that. March yeah, 15th, yeah. right? March 15th at Shenanigans. Yeah, uh, I want to be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> it's going to be. What day is it? What day is That's a Friday. Yeah. It's Friday. Yeah, okay. Friday yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And yep. I might go too. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be. It's going to be a good time. I was really bummed that the that the ice, you know, kind of canceled literally everything in Huntsville because it was supposed to be January 19th, mm -hmm. and then you know we couldn't leave our houses, so we had to cancel it. But uh, I shouldn't say cancel, reschedule. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a good time. Yeah. See, I have to ask you something a little off topic, but uh, I got to get to the bottom. Do you think you could kill a barracuda in the water? Oh my if a barracuda God. was a trying to kill one, you, dude. it's big. A, a, in the water? Like, you're, you're, in the water. So you're, you're, you're out in the water. You, you're, you're out swimming off the boat, right? Okay. In the middle of the ocean. It's just one singular barracuda, and he's trying to kill you. Okay. Could you take it? When I was in my 20s, I'd say yes, but right now, no. Yep, and you're way no. past your twenties. Not your twenties, man. So I will tell you. The other it. night, the other night at Shag Nasties, I was fucking around and I and I ran around the, the front of the room like high fiving people. I was like, yeah, yeah let's yeah. go, let's uh, go. And I was just high fiving people before I got up. When I got called up, I got up on stage and I was winded. I was like, all right, y'all, I barely ran. Give me a second. And yeah, so now no way, no way. This this Justin, no way. In my twenties, probably I was a little bit more fit and a mm -hmm. little bit more. Tenacious, maybe, but no. I'll be 38 in July, and this is this body's not doing anything. But in the water, you don't have to worry about the joints and shit. Yeah, but you're you're, you're fighting the resistance of the water. Like yeah. you can't like it's I can't swing back. like I could if I was outside the water. If it got yeah. in there, and it, try, it has to grip onto something, right? So as soon as it grabs you, you can just grab it. Dumb. I don't think it's that's in how fish the water. Yeah, like <laughs> it's not gonna get it. It's slimy and shit. No. It's got yeah. scales, dude. It's not happening. They're not slimy. Not they just have work. scales. It's in the water. It's gonna be scales are slimy, fuck. dude. Yeah. Have you ever held a fish out of water? <laughs> scales are slimy as fuck. This guy, man. I'm glad. I'm glad that you have a Thank reasonable. You. Thank you. That I, we're able to I've, humble this guy. I've been deep here. sea fishing. I don't know about y'all. I've, I've oh, yeah. a couple of times. I caught a shark one time. Oh shit. Sure. It's a, like it was only like five feet long. It's a little baby shark, shark but it shark, was man. it was still like a pain in the ass to sit there and reel in. Uh, and are that, they again, slimy? Probably we didn't, we didn't get him on the boat. Okay, we, we weren't okay. going to get him on the you boat. You let him out. Uh, I think we got him like basically right up to, and the guy who who owned the boat came up and was just like, "Yeah, that's a shark." And then he unhooked him and just let him go. So uh, where'd yeah. you go deep sea fishing? Uh, it was off the coast of Port St. Lucie, um, which is the Atlantic Ocean side of Florida. Oh, because okay. uh, oh, okay. that's where my my wife, some of her family lives down there, and uh, the guy who. It's the same guy I went boar hunting with. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. You ever been boar hunting? Never. Never. Did you so, jump out of a helicopter? No, no, no. Uh, so, <laughs> which would have been fun. This is a this is, this is going to end on a pretty bad note, but it's just a cool <laughs> idea of like that we went boar hunting. So, my wife's uncle, I think he is. Mm -hmm. He is the he's kind of like the um, agricultural manager of the University of Florida in some of their um, farmland that they've got down there mm -hmm. you know they have these sites where they basically research like you know crops and like soil and figure out like what grows and all that stuff it's just typical agriculture shit well there's wildlife down there obviously and wildlife has to be cold every now and then so boar are down there like crazy and they will fuck crops up they'll fuck everything up so he has to go boar hunting probably once a month to just control the population so, yeah. yeah okay and you go at night mm -hmm. and you just take a rifle and you literally walk through a dark field in pitch black darkness. Like there is, you have no light and he basically has like a path kind of carved around this field where he walks through and if you see a boar, you shoot it. So he lets me have the gun. We walk like through this field for probably two hours, pitch black. I've got my wife's uh, stepdad with me and then uncle uh, Monty and he kind of leads the way and everything. And he shows us on the trees where the boar have come up and like rub their tusk into the trees and there's markings all over it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, we're going to see some fucking boar. This is going to be awesome. Didn't see a single fucking boar <laughs> the entire night. We walked around that field for like two hours. And then at one point, Monty was just like pointed that way, like back towards his truck. And we went back up there and he was like, he's like, I can, I can tell they're just not even out tonight. So sorry. So. They had a. So I told you that was going to end like shit, <laughs> but you know, I thought it was going to be a horrific accident. Yeah, I thought that's. Me too. I thought it was going to be something <laughs> bad. Money got gored and he died. Yeah, that was how my 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 my, uh, my wife's uncle died. No. They got a big wild boar problem in Hawaii. I wouldn't those, doubt those it. Those motherfuckers yeah. are everywhere. Yeah. 
Tear shit up. Yeah, cool. Yep. You just give them some Pringles in there. <laughs> <laughs> but the they problem chill. is, aren't they going to keep coming back if you just give them some they Pringles? They do. Yeah. 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 yeah if you keep feeding them. So, Monty, like in that field, like they would set up traps at the top of the trees that would be full of just like rubbish, like junk food shit. Like it would just be nasty. Anything left over, they would basically put it in that. Mm-hmm. And that's how they would like train the boar, like where to go so that they would know like where to find them. So they would, every now and then, these, these things were on timers. They would open up and like just junk food would just fall down. And that's how they would know like where the boar were going to be and all that stuff. And pretty, pretty, pretty much train them to walk in like certain paths. Well, it still didn't really help because we didn't see any. But yeah, you just give them crap to eat mm-hmm. and they just multiply. Yeah, they'll be right back. Yeah. Damn, dude. That's crazy though. Like the whole like invasive species have to hunt them mm-hmm. to just control yeah. the population. Yep. Yeah. It's a lot of shit like that. What is those fish? Those Carp, scorpion fish? Mm-hmm. I've never heard of those. Scorpion fish. Scorpion fish. Half almost. fish, half scorpion. They got little dragon <laughs> fish. Dragon fish. Dragon fish is Still what I'm thinking. Of. Is that, dude? Look up dragon you mean fish. A lion fish? Might be a lion fish. You saw this yeah, on Game of Thrones. I'm talking about lion fish. <laughs> oh, you talking about the lion fish? Oh god, that's the I don't like the that's the that like is. underwater that. that's deep, 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 deep underwater thing that has like the oh light yeah. That Let me search up the lion fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I know what you're talking about. That's poisonous. Yeah, they 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 get all, all down, on the that reef. That thing's beautiful. What are you talking about? They get all in the reef and they kill like they eat all the shit. So the spines are poisonous. It's an invasive species, oh, yeah. huh? That'll kill you, dude. If you touch it, you're dead. No, oh, well, and see, that's why that's why it looks good. <laughs> that's an that's seriously like that's an evolutionary tactic. Uh-huh. It looks good so that something will approach it and then it can fuck it up. Damn, Damn. that's a hundred percent why it looks like that. So that's why the poison dart frogs look like so. They're beautiful, amazing. colorful. Mm-hmm. It's to attract things to it so that they can kill it. That's crazy. What you want to talk about next? All right. <laughs> so hold on. So on um, on Facebook Marketplace, you posted this uh, photo of the fresh bread. What's the market price? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the market price of fresh bread. Yeah, that Jack. Well. We, I seen the post. You had like all this bread and you were selling it. I don't have a clue. So this is an Instagram post from like 2011 where there was a Facebook Marketplace picture that you had showed that you put on there that had like a room full of bread. Oh, I that wasn't my post. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was something that I had Whoa. found that was like I was making a joke out of it. Like, yeah. why the fuck would somebody sell a bunch of bread on Marketplace? Well, JK, he does that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he does. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't sell it on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Do you work for uh you work was that bread company Bimbo? <laughs> you work for Bimbo? I used to. I used to work for Bimbo, then I worked for Lewis. Oh man. Yo, is yeah. that why you're so good at peanut butter and jelly? I mean He understands bread texture, yeah, exactly. how the peanut butter is gonna spread. Because mm-hmm. you can get some shitty bread and you can go to spread it and oh. it's gonna tear the bread up. Yep. Finally somebody understands. <laughs> I'm so sick of these fucking simpletons come in here. They don't know anything about bread and shit. Let me ask you something as a, as a PBJ person. Um, what do you think about goober grape? Remember goober grape? Dude, no. Ooh. No? That is, no? That is sacrilege, man. <laughs> that is insane. It's the uh, can it, or the jar it has peanut butter and, and jelly. jelly. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. As a no, kid, dude. but as a kid, though, that was like a dream because I was like, I can just go in here and take a knife and scoop this shit out and boom, I got my own thing. Go well, back I like to playing. the fluffer nutter one. Oh, I didn't, I didn't the marshmallow cream and the oh, peanut that. butter in the same I jar. I had that. That sounds good. That's I had a good. phase of that in my youth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In their youth, Good you hear times. this? Uh, in their, I know. Yeah. Dude, shit like that kills me. <laughs> like, I, ever since I've been back and I'm seeing like like I, I'm like I said, I moved to Atlanta in 2012, and I got back here this past August. So that's 11 years mm-hmm. that I really hadn't been here. Um, my parents used to live out in North Huntsville, kind of off Winchester Shields in that area. So when I would come here over the years for like holidays and stuff, mm-hmm. I would just I was just going up there just to go see them. And then you hit 72 out that way, and you go towards Scottsboro, and you can go back to Atlanta. So I never really came like into Huntsville that much over those years because I would just come see family and then I'd go back. Mm-hmm. And then when I remember when I got back and my wife and I were like kind of house hunting before, um, you know, before we finally settled on something, I remember like I drove by stove house and I was just like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Why is <laughs> it that happened on, so fast. Why man. is that on governors? That like what, what is going on here? And my dad's in construction. So I've grown up around some of this stuff and I, and I know like, like mid city that yeah. used to be Mad- Madison square mall. 
I remember I that mall. Mm-hmm. I used to go to Madison Square Mall as a kid. Mm-hmm. Like, like we used to skip fucking school and go hang out at Madison Square Mall all day. I went to a, a uh, World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King midnight release party oh, shit. in 2007 wow. oh, at that shit. mall. My Big time. Oh. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> number one, number one talking <laughs> Number one point. topic. World number of Warcraft, baby. You were waiting on that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you. I know <laughs> you're a nerd. So. <laughs> it's, uh, oh. it's uh, a good way. It's a little bit of a... Uh, here's what's really weird. Talking about age and stuff. So mm-hmm. WoW came out November 2004. That's when it came out, all the way. Came out in Wow, oh. of, of November two thousand four. Wow. I started playing December two thousand four. Still play, wow. mm-hmm. not as much as I used to, obviously, but I still play. I started doing the math the other day. I have played that game more than half of my life. Wow! Because this year, this November, will be twenty years of that game. Mm-hmm. I started playing it when I was eighteen. Damn! I've no. literally played that game more than half of my life. Do you play the video game too? What are you talking about? That is the video game. It is a video game. game. I thought it was a board game. No, no, that's a video game. No, man. No, 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 no. World of Warcraft. So World of Warcraft is a... That's an open world. It's a computer game, dude. It's dragons. It's kind of like Skyrim in a way, but not really. Oh. So it's it's an MMO, (laughs) MMORPG. Like it's a, you know, you play as like a warrior and a hunter and Uh a priest and all that stuff. Uh, based off of the old Warcraft games from the 90s. Okay. Those are the old real-time strategy, turn-based, not turn-based, but uh, real-time strategy games where you would do like orcs versus humans and elves mm-hmm. versus undead and stuff like that. So they turned that into an MMO in 2004, and it's been like it's been Blizzard's like biggest thing ever since. Um, but yeah, me and some buddies from high school used to play for years, and then they kind of dropped off because they're fucking pussies. <laughs> um, had kids and shit. Yeah. Um, so I, I kept playing, you know, play with strangers. I got a buddy of mine that lives in California. We still play every now and then. Um, but it's just, it's dude, it's fun. It's one of those things that like, you know, some people have golf. Mm-hmm. Some people have disc golf. Yeah, well, uh, well, we don't talk about those. That's so, so weird. There's a course it's, at UAH. I tried to burn it down, <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things that like, I can, if I need to chill, if I need to relax, Mm -hmm. headphones on, music on, log into WoW, play for three hours, and everything just kind of just shuts down. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's one of those relaxing things. Always have. Yeah, Yeah, when my, uh, you play too? Man, no, I'm just a gamer. Like me, I want to know the question, which one is it? Is it PC, Xbox, or PlayStation? PC. For like just gaming in general? No, I'm talking about like you, which one do you prefer? PS5. PS5. There we go. Yeah, Come here. Give me some. Give me some. Oh, um, man. So yeah. I, I've, I've, you know, obviously, WoW's only on PC, so I've always played that okay. on PC. Um, but I, um, I, got a PS, I got a PS4 a while back and then upgraded to the PS5 and everything. But then I got an Xbox recently just for Starfield. Shitty decision. Is it, is it bad? Starfield fucking suck. You got the new man. Xbox too, right? Uh, the, the S, I guess. The, I don't know. That's, that's the, the, that's the, the, uh, the PlayStation Five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same generation. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 So it Starfield. Like that was really the only reason that I got the Xbox because I was like, oh man, Starfield's gonna be like Fallout in space and Skyrim in space. Mm-hmm. It sucks. It does. It's so boring. Yeah. Like they 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 advertised it as like, oh, you'll be able to explore this galaxy and go to these other planets mm-hmm. and fly to them. You'll have a ship and all this stuff. You can just fast travel from one planet to the next. So what's the point of the space travel? Like, why are you giving me a spaceship if I can just hit a button and then I'm on a different planet? Oh, like, so yeah. it, I get it. It kind of sucks saying. the fun out of it. So I was really disappointed in that. And then um, I did start playing Cyberpunk uh, a little bit How more recently. It sucked when it launched. Uh-huh. It was terrible when it launched. Bug, it, had buggy, a lot of, right? it had a lot of bugs. Mm-hmm. The enemy AI was terrible. Like, you could literally walk up to a cop, shoot him in the face, and then run 10 feet away from him, and they wouldn't chase you. Oh, it was yeah, like, well, what's the point of this? So I want to say this past fall or this past summer, they updated it and like really polished it up. And it's a lot better now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like GTA in the future. Um, I do wish you could play third person, but, you know, whatever. Um, but no, it's fun. I tell, you, I tell you what, though, and I don't know if you've played this, Baldur's Gate 3. Fuck, man. What's that on? Is that on PlayStation? It's on all of them. Okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you now. If say you're it not again. A, Baldur's Gate 3. If you are into D and D at all, that's your game. And I'm not. I don't. I've played D and D like twice. Now D and D is the one that. That's what I was that's thinking. That's the actual of. board that's game. That's the actual yeah, board yeah, yeah, game. Yeah. 
yeah, mean, yeah. you can't even really call it a board game. It's it's like a, it's just a tabletop pen, pe- pencil and paper kind of thing. So Baldur's Gate is the one and two came out in the nineties, late nineties, early two thousand. I can't remember when the second one came out, but it's turn based combat action dialogue all that stuff mm-hmm. what they did with this one another developer came in and basically said all right we're going to make Baldur's gate 3 we're going to do it fully voice acted fully motion captured crazy good graphics mm-hmm. and then still incorporate the good turn-based combat we're going to incorporate all this other stuff to it one game of the year now, now turn base is like final fantasy right uh, a little bit except that in in this so like if in final fantasy like when you when you come up to an enemy mm-hmm. you're sort of like your party standing here and they're standing here and then you just take turns with characters this you could be standing down there like where that one girl's like walking through that path mm-hmm. and you get ambushed by like wolves or something yeah the wolves are like here here up on a hill your party's like here and then where, there might be somebody that's like down below or something so you have to move around and like attack oh, okay. these things and, and be a little bit more strategic with it so it's it's just um it's very well produced uh it's it's got an incredible story like there was mo- this is i'm nerding out for real right now. <laughs> there was one moment in the story that i sat there and was like fucking sweating bullets dude i'm not like you had to make a decision about one of the characters runs into what she believes to be her people's god mm-hmm. and in the moment she's kind of finding out that that's not true and you're literally watching somebody lose faith like on the spot and you have to make this decision about whether or not to support her or to tell her she's wrong or to align with the God. And if you mm. disobey the God, is that God going to kill you? Like you, you're literally just like, this is like life or death shit. I have to decide <laughs> this like right now. Damn. And I like, I finished that scene and luckily I made like the right decision and everything. Got done with it. Turned the game off, went to the living room <laughs> and told my wife, I was like, I just did something in a video game that I don't think I've ever done <laughs> like it was it was just a it was a moment where you're just like this is gonna win game of the year mm. and it did and it did so it was it's very well done okay i'm gonna check that out i need a new game to play okay so you do so we got epic incredible and terrific mm-hmm. and awesome hour. awesome's not going oh, on right now okay. but scott's working on trying to get awesome kicked back off so but you're gonna you're the host of Terrific. terrific i'm trying to be uh so <laughs> let me talk about like what terrific is going to be first because i feel like huntsville comedians are going to want to know this too mm-hmm. and then obviously our audience so the idea for terrific came i think from just me being here for a little bit and thinking i want to have our sh- i want to have epic comedy hour presents have a show that gives locals like a little bit more of an opportunity Epic is definitely that, and so is Incredible. But both of those shows have gained a reputation now of getting comics from you know throughout the Southeast and throughout the country. So I wanted something that I felt like was going to be a little bit more close to home and would give people a little bit more of an opportunity to shine. So I wanted to do, you know, Shenanigans is big about if you do a show, put an intermission in there because mm-hmm. we want our audience to go get drinks, go to the bathroom, do all that stuff. I was like, all right, what if we did a half book show and a half open mic? Mm. So I kind of had that idea rolling around for a little while. Thought about it, thought about the logistics of it, kind of bailed on it for a little while. And then I thought, no, we can, we can make this work. Let's do five comics up front, 10 minutes each, and then we'll open up that second half to be an open mic. But it's not going to be an open mic to where you can just show up that night and sign up. Mm-hmm. Wanted this to be like a little bit more selective, but also a little bit more special and a little bit more random. So what we're going to do is the week before the show, okay. we're going to put up a link where people can go and sign up. And all it is is a Google form that you just basically type in your name and your email address and you send that to, it comes to me. Um, and then we're going to leave that link up for the entire week. The following Monday, we're going to close that link. And then I'm going to use a random number generator to basically select eight comics from that list. Because it'll come through and it'll go to an Excel spreadsheet. So everything's like automatically numbered already. So all I got to do is find a number generator that says, okay, we had 20 people sign up. Generate me eight numbers from 20. Exclude, you know, duplicates. So don't pick five twice, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that'll be my eight. And then once those are selected, you'll get an email saying that you're selected. And then on that Thursday, you perform. So it's like a little bit more. That's part of the open mic. 
I don't. Or I don't even it, really like calling it an open mic because it's not really an open but, mic. But it's not but part it's, of the set. Show. It's not part of the first half. Okay, like a yeah. digital bucket spot kind of. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. It's so. It's such a. It's a. It's kind of an open mic because it's like doing. If you try to get on the open mic at Laughing Skull in Atlanta, they you can't go there and show and sign up. Like that shit's booked months in advance. Oh. Damn. Um, you send them an email and you tell them you're interested in everything. They find a spot for you and then you get an email and it says, all right, you're, you're signed up. You're going to be on whatever date and, you know, show up this night and you're up. Okay. I wanted it to be kind of like that, but I also wanted it to be kind of similar to, and I know I, I beat a dead horse here with Atlanta, but it's all I know because I lived there for 11 years. Mm-hmm. There's another show over there and I, I think it's still going on Monday night. It's called star bar. Well, the, the place is called star bar. Uh, and the guy that runs that is an old old punk guy named Rotney R O T K N E E Rotney instead of instead of Rodney just Rotney. Um, the way that you get on that show, it's every every Monday night. There's always like a headliner. He he kind of selects those ahead of time. But the mm-hmm. way you get on that show every Sunday in Atlanta, people. I'm sorry if I'm telling this wrong. It's been a long time since I've heard this, but this is the way that I remember it. Uh, he shuts his phone off at four o'clock every Sunday. And then he turns it back on at like 4.05. And you're supposed to call in between that window. Well, if his phone's off, it goes straight to voicemail. Mm -hmm. So what he does is when he turns his phone on, he listens to the first 10 voicemails. And those are the people who get on. So that idea was sort of what informed this was like, I want there to be like a randomness to this. I Mm -hmm. want there to be kind of a, um, we're not playing favorites. You know, we're not. It's random. It's completely random. But then the, the catch to all this is that the epic producers, so me and Scott and Raina and Tim, and the five comics from the first half will select two of the people who did the best on that second half to be on the next month's first half. So that way you get five minutes of this show at, at your open mic section, but you're also going to get a chance to earn that 10-minute 10, 10 set the next month. Mm. So, you know, epic now, most of the time the sets are like 15, 15 16, 17 minutes. Most of the open mics around here are five. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you might run into the occasional six or seven every now and then. You can but do whatever you want at Boxcar. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. There's yeah. also nobody there to watch. Yeah. Right, yeah. So you, it's definitely open-ended. <laughs> Party foul. Right. My bad, um, guys. Chug a beer. I was going to say, shout out to Alex for uh, Boxcar. Oh, and, yeah. and Jake Saturday. for tonight. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. But, uh, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if, if I've seen a place so far that's offering a 10-minute. No, uh, I mean I don't, no, no, no. Not you would have to be mind. featured on something, sure, to get, yeah. right? Like get you know, Fat spot. Sammy's when Charlie was, but it still was like seven, I think. Right, and that's right. one. That's one person. Yeah, that's instead one person, of instead of like five, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. And I no might knock it back to four, four people instead of five people because mm-hmm. I am kind of a little bit worried about the timing. I don't want us to be there all night, and the I crowd. feel like, yeah, I feel like five up front might run it a little bit too late. Uh, and I was gonna see how it runs this month, but then now we get into my whole neck bullshit and that whole thing so i have to have surgery on february 13th because i have a bulging disc in my neck Mm. so this will drop the day before that or the day yeah a couple days before that Mm -hmm. uh so by the time some of you are listening to this i may be in anesthesia in a (laughs) hospital somewhere um so they're gonna go in and take this disc out and fix my neck and everything so i don't have this arm pain that i have anymore Mm -hmm. uh but then the bummer of this is that i have to wear a neck brace for potentially four to six weeks after this thing so i will not be around for a while (laughs) but what i'm really bummed is the first terrific is supposed to be february 29th Mm -hmm. i can't i was planning on hosting it i was planning on being there to run it make sure everything runs like i want can't be there now so luckily kim has stepped up kim wilson from shenanigans thank you kim shout out Um, she has she has stepped up and and said that she'll host it in my stead so uh so that first night is going to be her uh dan price jj uh sci-fi sierra and ashlyn oh shit that's, that's, be that's, a, good a, show. that's the first that's, that's the first show one. right there and the idea you know we wanted to do it on thursdays it's supposed to be fourth fourth thursday of every month we couldn't do it on the fourth thurs- thursday this month because something else was going on mm-hmm. um at the black box um and then next month the fourth thursday is actually the week after epic or is that right 
Yeah, yeah, because the fourth Friday, they fall on different weeks. Um, the idea is that we want to be able to eventually have, if somebody's coming to do Epic on a Friday night and they need a Thursday night show, they can come here and they can do Terrific, they can stay and they can do Epic on Friday and then they can head out. So that was the that was kind of the idea of wanting to do it on a Thursday. Uh, weird, weird, you know, day of the week to do a show, but I've seen people come out to, you know, weekday shows before. Yeah, it's yeah. not, not going to be a disaster, hopefully. <laughs> well, we can't. We can't wait to uh, see it. I can't wait to see yeah. JJ up there. Yeah, he's probably gonna. Bomb, JJ's been, you know, man. You know, I, I'd be bombing and shit. <laughs> JJ's been doing very well. Oh, he's been killing, Hell very well, murdering out there. Yeah. All right, this is the end of the podcast. Cool, man. All right, what we're we gonna do? You just say whatever you want. First of all, we want to say thank you. Thank yeah, you so much, much for right? coming you, on here. Dude. Absolutely, yeah. appreciate you having me. Hey, 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 thank you for the gift. Is how, come, how come I didn't get a um, uh, what's the other? There it is. Uh, yeah. 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 I knew it. I knew it. I couldn't think of the name of it. I knew what I was thinking. Rada Team. Um, <laughs> what? That's what that is. <laughs> Rada Team. All my, all my social things and images are going to pop up, I think, right here. Uh, I'll go ahead and say it now. Don't follow me. Just don't follow me. Follow Epic Comedy Hour on Facebook and Instagram. Follow Huntsville Comedy on Facebook and Instagram. And then go out there and follow every other thing that's related to Huntsville Comedy. Shenanigans. Uh, homegrown, these guys, uh, everything else. I don't matter. I, I don't matter at all. That's Huntsville, nonsense. Huntsville Com- we Huntsville, love them. Huntsville yeah. Comedy matters. Go follow Huntsville Comedy and you'll find out about everything else. So do that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you for coming. Right. Thank, Thank you so much. Guys. Hell yeah.